Wow, hello everyone. So nice to play for a live audience and so great to see all of your faces. Thanks for joining us today. And hi to everyone at home listening on Facebook. Um, we are Panda Cat players and for those of you who haven't heard our backstory yet, it's no coincidence that our name sounds a little bit like Pandemic. We're actually a chamber group that formed during the pandemic. Uh, we were missing playing together, so we started with some online recordings, and then we were lucky enough to do three live concerts last summer, uh, very much thanks due to our wonderful hosts, Todd Wiener and Paula Jacoby, so thanks for having us. And it's really interesting doing something like this about a year later. You can really see how the world has changed a little bit since a year ago. Um, you know, I can actually see, be close enough to Anna to see her facial expressions. The first time we did this, we had to sit so far apart. Um, so today's music is really very celebratory in nature. It's a celebration of uh, our first live concert of this year, but also the fact that the performing arts are coming back. We're actually able to play live again and it's so exciting every time a playing opportunity comes up. So we started today's show with, uh, well, let me introduce the musicians to you, actually. So we have Anna Belzo on oboe, <laughs> Andrew Noble on oboe, Carl Raza on bassoon, Josh Fleming on bassoon, Matthew Oliphant on horn, Jeremiah Frederick on horn, Patrick Raker on clarinet. And I'm Barbara Drapcho, the founder of Panda Cat Play. So as I said, we have music of a very celebratory nature. We started with Scott Joplin. Um, I grew up listening to my mom play Scott Joplin ragtime on the piano. So to me, it's not only happy music, it's also music that reminds me of my childhood. Um, and it just seemed fitting for a beautiful summer afternoon to throw a little Joplin in there and you'll hear some later. So the next piece that we're going to play took me on a little bit of an unexpected adventure. It's by Schubert and Schubert wrote a very famous unfinished symphony. So I mentioned my childhood a minute ago. One of my first experiences with classical music was actually through the television show The Smurfs. The theme song for the, <laughs> the evil Gargamel was Schubert's unfinished symphony. Well, you're about to hear Schubert's unfinished wind octets. He actually only finished two movements of this piece, the third movement and the fourth movement. They'll be the second and third things that we play today, plus just a little snippet of the first movement. So if you're wondering why the first movement is so very short, it's that we only wanted to play what Schubert actually wrote. Um, so we hope you enjoy it. It's a lot of fun. And uh, in case you're curious where this fell in Schubert's compositional life, it was composed right around the time that he was starting to write symphony music, which might be why he got so distracted and never actually finished it. But it is delightful and we hope you enjoy Schubert's Wind Octet.
Thanks, everyone. So that was Schubert's very little known wind octet, which was a fun exploration exploration for us. It's a piece that doesn't get played all that often. It's always fun to take a really famous composer and play something that is not as well known by him. Our next piece is something that's extremely well known, although not necessarily in this formation. It's from Mozart's Grand Partita, which normally is written for 13 instruments, right? 13? Sorry. Yeah, 13 instruments. Um, and normally for a clarinet section of four, two clarinets and two basset horns. Now I happen to be one of those weirdos who loves the basset horn and owns my own, and I happen to be a basset horn specialist. So why do an octet version of the Grand Partita? Well, because I never get to play the clarinet part. So, and also um, our good friend Jack Riddle donated this piece to us. He's been very generous with music and uh, it's delightful and charming. It's not the entire Grand Partita, that would take all day. It's just, uh, <laughs> it's just three movements of it. Um, we're starting with the romance and we're also doing the minuet and trio and we're ending with a theme and variation. So here is Mozart's Divertimento uh, arrangement of Grand Partita for wind octet.
Thank you.
Joplin music. And for those who are maybe really detail oriented, you may notice I've changed my shoes. And there's a musical reason for that. And if you've never taken tap dance lessons as an adult, you don't know what you're missing. These are in fact tap shoes. And it's not an accident, there's some percussion in this next Joplin piece. And I wonder if, just so I don't feel like such a weirdo, I mean, I already have tap shoes on, so, you know, that should have sailed. But um, maybe if you could stomp along with me when you see me stomp, that would certainly make me feel a lot better. Uh, so we're going to start this half with Scott Joplin's uh, Ragtime Dance. Thanks to all who stomped along with me just now. Um, so we're going to play our final piece, which is the Beethoven Octet, just a really happy, sweet piece of music. We meant to play this piece a little over a year ago, or so, sorry, slightly under a year ago, but a very cold day kept us from doing that. So how lucky are we to have such a gorgeous day to bring this music to you. Um, I just want to take one more chance to thank our wonderful hosts, Todd Wiener and Paula Jacoby. Thank you so much. to see all of your faces. We've been doing so much live streaming, which we love. Hi, everyone at home. Uh, but it's really, really nice to do things for live human beings as well. So thanks so much for sharing your afternoon with us. Uh, here is our final piece, the Beethoven Octet.